all right now here we go with the first question so always mark the keyword so as to arrive at the correct answer because keyword will help you to narrow down what the question is looking for let's first look at option e it says trainable classifier trainable classifier uses machine learning to classify content based on examples not keyword based detection incorrect we'll move to option b b says retention policy retention policy controls data life cycle but doesn't support keyword based classification let's delete this we'll move to c c says sensitivity label sensitivity level applies protection settings to content but doesn't define keyword detection logic let's delete this we'll move to option d d says sensitive information type a keyword dictionary is created and managed as a part of a custom sensitive information type to enable detection of specific terms across microsoft 365 content that being said option d is the right answer okay let's tackle a question related to dlp we'll look at a first option e option e says generate a document fingerprint from assessment template dot docs to track its derivatives creating fingerprint from original template allows dlp to detect filled in versions of the form across microsoft 365 location with minimal configuration effort looks good because as per the solution uh, question we need ensure the solution requires least amount of setup that is minimum development effort or configuration effort let's keep this we'll move to option b b says define a sensitive info type with exact data match edm to catch repeated structured values edm is designed for structured data sets like tables not for detecting template documents in incorrect we'll move to option c c says upload 120 samples from the assessment folder into a seed directory to build the fingerprint seeding folders is not a part of document fingerprinting process and adds unnecessary steps wrong choice no to d this is create a document fingerprint using 120 sample assessment files stored in the assessment folder creating fingerprint for 120 documents increases setup complexity and violates the goal to minimize effort we'll delete this we'll lock option e as the right answer all right now here we go with an interesting question we'll look at first option e e says save the terms in excel spreadsheet that is excel uh, file which each keyword occupying in a single cell in the first row excel format is not supported for uh, keyword dictionary import in the microsoft purview incorrect we'll move to option b b says store the terms in an xml document placing each keyword inside a keyword tag xml is used for rule packaging but not for uploading keyword dictionaries we'll reject this and we'll move to option c c says insert the keywords into the into a table named dictionary inside database file uh, acc db files are used for exact data match not keyword dictionary incorrect we are left out with option d it says use a plain text file placing each keyword in on a separate line for ingestion microsoft 365 keyword dictionaries require a line separated plain text file where each word or phrase appears on its own line that being said option d is the right choice okay let's tackle this question this is about dlp that is data loss prevention we'll look at first option e e says run connect ipps session connect ipps session is required cmd led to access the microsoft purview compliance portal which supports document fingerprint operations let's keep this we'll move to b b says use connect spo service connect spo service connects to sharepoint admin center but doesn't support compliance task like document fingerprinting incorrect 
no to see c says execute connect exchange online connect exchange online is used for exchange related configuration and not for compliance session access wrong answer we'll move to d d says launch connect mg graph connect mg graph facilitates graph based automation but does uh, but cannot perform uh, dlp specific fingerprint uploads let's delete this we'll lock option a run connect IBPS session as the right answer. Okay, let's tackle an interesting question which is about advanced GLP rule we need to configure and we need to define a condition that will trigger the rule when sensitive content is detected. Let's look at first option E. It says sensitive information type. Sensitive information type is a supported condition in advanced DLP rule enabling pattern based detection such as credit card numbers or national id looks good we can keep this let's move to option b b says content search query content search queries are used for e discovery and are not valid condition in uh, dlp rule logic incorrect we'll move to option c c says sensitive label sensitive sensitivity label can be used for protection but are not supported as conditions in all dlp rule scopes let's delete this we'll move to d d says keywords keywords are not a standalone condition type in advanced dlp rules detection relies on sensitive information types or custom classifiers wrong choice we'll lock option a sensitive information type as the right answer all right now this is a multiple choice question which will test your concepts on dlp that is data loss prevention we need to select two correct answers always please make sure to read the equation correct fully correctly because if you skip reading the question you might end up selecting just one answer which will uh, um, narrow down or lower your chances of uh, passing because um, um, there is no negative marking uh, right so we are free to make uh, some guesses here as well and who knows uh, if we make a guess we might get the answer correct as well so let's first look at option a it says sensitivity level sensitivity level classify and protect content but do not contribute to conditional dlp actions based on data occurrence therefore um, incorrect we'll move to option b b says sensitive information type sensitive information type defines the detection pattern for the unique 11 character identifier enabling the dlp engine to recognize and count occurrences let's keep this no to see c says dlp policy dlp policy enforces rules based on the number of detected identifiers and routes messages for approval when thresholds are met let's keep this we'll move to d d says retention label retention labels manage how long content is kept but uh, do not participate in triggering dlp conditions for policy enforcement wrong choice we'll lock option b sensitive information type and dlp policy as the right choice all right now here we go with an interesting question where um, we need to select the minimum number of retention policies which should be created let's look at option a it says deploy one static retention policy for all location a single policy cannot target both teams messaging and content workloads like exchange and sharepoint so incorrect well more to b b says use two static retention policies to cover required workloads one policy can cover team chat and team channel messages while another can cover exchange mailboxes sharepoint sites and microsoft 365 uh, groups resulting in two policies in total um let's keep this we'll move to option c c says apply three separate static retention policies to address content separation three policies are unnecessary since uh, teams messaging can be grouped and um, content workloads can be combined under one policy as mentioned in option b so that being said uh, option um, c is out containing three policies and um, same goes for option um, d as well because four is uh, like uh, too much like um it's like uh, even two can suffice why why do we need four then 
right so that being said uh, we will reject option d and lock option b as the right answer let's bring the heat to the snow we are implementing microsoft purview data lifecycle management to control how long content is retained or deleted let's look at what should be the first configuration step we'll look at option a he says sensitivity label policy sensitivity label policy handles data protection and classification not uh, life cycle management incorrect we'll move to b b says data loss prevention dlp policy data loss prevention uh, policy detect and restrict sensitive data sharing but uh, do not govern content life cycle we'll delete it we'll move to option c c says auto labeling policy auto labeling policies apply existing retention labels but require the label to be created first incorrect we'll move to d d says retention label retention label defines the rules for retaining or deleting content and is the foundational element required before applying life cycle policies so that being said option d is the right choice okay let's look at another multiple choice question we'll first look at option a he says define a file policy in microsoft defender for cloud apps file fall policies monitor and control file activity but do not enable retention label assignment in the share point incorrect we'll move to option b b says adjust site settings in the share point admin center site settings manage site level configuration but do not control label creation or publishing therefore wrong choice we'll move to c c says use the microsoft purview portal to create a label creating a label in microsoft purview defines the rules for how content is retained or deleted let's keep this we'll move to d d says use the microsoft purview portal to publish a label publishing makes the label available to users in sharepoint so they can apply it to documents that being said this is another correct answer we'll lock option c and d as the right choice all right now here we go with an interesting question where we are uh, need to copy the file with auditing enabled let's look at first option a he says deploy a single dlp policy that contains one dlp rule to manage all conditions one rule cannot handle both exclusion based permission and universal restrictions accurately that being said we'll reject it let's look at option b b says deploy a single dlp policy that contain two dlp rules to distinguish between user groups a single policy with uh, two rules reduces policy level auditing control and may complicate governance separation so this is again out we are left out with option c it says create two separate dlp policies each containing one dlp rule aligned to a user segment separate policies allows us to scope one policy to group 3 with audit permissions and another to all other users with a block action ensuring clear separation of logic and user targeting that being said option c is the right choice so please 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 don't go away let's meet in next part of this series